Okay, we're finally getting to partial differential equations, which is pretty much what this entire course is really about. What we've been doing up to now is, is doing some prerequisites for this. Um, and even what we do cover in terms of partial differential equations is fairly restricted. We're, only, we're gonna restrict ourselves to linear first or second order homogeneous partial differential equation so that they'll be in this form. Linear means, well, our function is u. It's gonna be a function of two variables, say x and y, two or more variables. And it appears, it and its derivatives appear in linear fashion. You won't see a derivative squared, for example. Or you won't see the function u times its derivative. It'll be in this form, and it'll be a zero on the right. That's what homogeneous means. And all these coefficients can be functions of the uh, independent variables, written here, x and y. Um, so those are the kind of uh, partial differential equations we'll attempt to solve. I'm going to put another restriction on it pretty quick here. A big theorem in all this is the superposition principle, which says if you already have a couple of solutions, then any linear combination of those solutions is also a solution. Um, and it could be a whole bunch of solutions. Add them up. A weighted sum is also a solution, all the way up to infinity. If each of these u sub i's is a solution, this infinite linear sum, linear combination is also a solution. Um, we'll be making much use of that principle. Another thing, until later in the course, anyway, the only method we're going to use to solve these guys is, is a method called the product method, also known as separation of variables, partial differential, different than the separation of variables method for ordinary differential. By the way, why do you need, what do you mean partial differential equations? That's when your function is a function of more than one independent variable. Only got one independent variable, that's ordinary differential equation. Anyway, the product method says your function can be written this way as, as a product of functions that are functions of only each variable separately. And our notation is if lowercase x is the variable then the function that's a function of just little x, we call uppercase x. So we divided it up into these two functions. We divided our original function into the product of these other two functions. So more notation is the subscript. U sub x means the partial of the function u with respect to x. And when you have it as a product like this, that would be x prime, which means the total derivative of the big function x or the function big x with respect to the variable little x. Um, if you look at all these, if I have two subscripts, it means that double partial, like I can have sub x y, that means this second partial with respect to each of the variables. And, that would be x prime, y prime, where y prime means the derivative of big Y with respect to little y. If this is your first time doing this, this might seem a little strange. Go ahead and pause this chart and look it over and make sure this little, these substitutions come easy to you. You know, when you see an equation, you should be able to immediately write it in the product form. You know, go from like this use of yy to x y double prime. That should be painless. Um, and a note 
that not all partial differential partial differential equations are separable. Get more into what separable means. The, the short answer is I could algebraically get all X stuff on one side of the equal sign and all Y stuff on the other side. Uh, you can't always do that. Here's an example where you can't do that. Here's the equation that's given. Here it is written in product form. And if I try to algebraically manipulate this, I cannot separate the variables. Like here, I've still got X and Y mixed together. And anything I do to get the X's or the Y's out of this middle term, we'll put them in these other two terms. So this is an example of a non-separable partial differential equation. Other restriction for this course is we're only going to solve separable PDEs. Get into how this works. Here's your equation. This left side equals zero. I could rewrite it just with different notation. This is the same equation here. Using the product method, u sub x means x prime y, capital letters, and u sub y means x y prime. That's all we did in this line, is just wrote it in terms of the separated functions. Here we start some algebra, and I'll divide everything by the same term, big X, big Y here. So let's see. These Y's will cancel, and I have X prime over X. These X's cancel, I'll have Y prime over Y, and I can put the Y stuff over on the right side. So at this point, they are separated. What does that mean? It's all X stuff on the left and all Y stuff on the right, but they're equal to each other. You've got a function of X equals a function of Y. Only way that can happen is if they equal the same constant. We call that the separating constant. So let's just call that, I'll say minus lambda. Might not know why I put minus lambda there, but uh, you get used to doing these, you'll know why I picked that. It, it makes things more convenient later. So we'll set, they're already equal. We'll set them equal to the same constant called minus lambda. That means this x prime over x equals minus lambda and y prime over y equals one third lambda. Well, what, what we're gonna get from that is two ordinary differential equations. This is an ordinary differential equation. It's all just one variable, little x. And this is another ordinary differential equation. Uh, a function only of little y. So we've converted our partial differential equation problem into an ordinary differential equation problem. So here we go back to, well, first let's, let's look at this, this x prime over x equals minus lambda. Algebraically, you can switch it around and you get this differential equation. If you go back to our ordinary differential equation solutions. This was one of the equations you put like on a list of already solved ordinary differential equations. We actually solved it, but then we just put it on a list that we're gonna use as a formula sheet. And it had this solution, some arbitrary constant times e to the minus alpha x. Well, this is in that same format, which means this Big X function is an arbitrary constant times e to the minus lambda X. Do something similar for the Y equation. Here is its ordinary differential equation and it's actually in the same form, which means it equals this other functions, it's still e to the something Y. 
So we have the two solutions to the two separated ordinary differential equations. The total function was this product, big X, big, big Y. So that means it's just a product of these two solutions. We could combine these constants into one constant and rewrite the solution and here it is. Um, I'm not gonna go through this check. You could, you could take this solution and put it back into your original uh, <coughs> equation down here and confirm that it is indeed the solution to that. It was a first, the original thing was a first order uh, partial differential equation. So we only needed one uh, arbitrary, well, it's actually two, two parameters involved. We'll get into this later. Um, your answer could have looked different and still be correct. It just depends on how you define your separate We'll do this second example in another recording.